Hello, everybody. How are you? I'm Candace Valdez from Radio Disney. Very excited to have all of you guys here for this global press conference for Disney Godmother. You guys know it's going to be streaming on Disney Plus coming up December 4th. And I'm excited to introduce the cast to you guys today. So if you're ready, please welcome the fabulous Jillian Bell, Isla Fisher, Jillian Spader, Willa Skye, Santiago Cabrera is here, Artemis Pebani, Utkarsh Ambudkar, and Jane Curtin. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Welcome everybody. I know you're so excited to talk about this movie. I feel so lucky that I've actually had a chance to see the movie. So congratulations, first of all. It was so cute, so fun. Uh, my only regret was that I don't have my Christmas decorations up right now. I wish I had the complete vibe going on. Um, but I'm excited to chat with you guys and we'll start with uh, Jillian. Give us a brief rundown of what Disney Godmother is all about. Uh, it is a story about a fairy godmother in training who I play, Eleanor, and she uh, goes down to earth to prove that fairy godmothers are still uh, needed. And she is looking for a little girl by the name of Mackenzie Walsh and comes to find out that the little girl is now grown up and is played by the lovely Isla Fisher. Um, and Mackenzie, the character Isla plays, doesn't really believe that she needs a fairy godmother. But maybe she does. Maybe she does. Maybe she does. There you go. And Isla, tell me a little bit about the balance of comedy and heart in this movie, because we know your comedic humor and your physical comedy is amazing. But tell me about the balance in this movie between the two. Well, that's what's fun about this story. It's We kind of think of it as a hybrid of broadcast news meets elf. We've got a lot of fun physical comedy and a lot of, you know, sight gags and slapstick. And then we have also wordplay and my character is more, I'm kind of the straight man in this story, which is something I haven't really uh, enjoyed before. I mean, had the opportunity to get to play. And uh, it was just really nice uh, kind of, um, yeah, trying not to laugh when Jillian is absolutely hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Jane, I'm curious to know how this character compares to other characters that you've played before because her hair is incredible and that must have been a long time in the hair and makeup and wardrobe and all of that stuff. Well, it was the only tall character I've ever played. So <laughs> it, it, was, it was a momentous thing for me to actually tower over other people. But uh, yeah, the makeup and the hair and the costumes created that character. I mean, they forced you into a certain posture and a certain way of being. And, and it, it really suited the strictness of, of Moira. So I, I, I liked the whole outfit. Yeah. And I'm curious, Jillian and Willa, did you guys actually feel like siblings on set filming this? I think I did. Yes, absolutely. We. We love each other so much and we had lots of cuddle parties and we played with lots of slime in our free time. Yeah. Lots of slime. Okay. I like that. And we should shout out Willa. She said she got her braces off. So Yay. that's a big Yay. deal. Yay. <laughs> Congratulations. And you guys, there's a little bit of a, a news a news situation going on. I don't want to give too much away in the movie. Santiago, Artemis, and Utkarsh. Were you guys familiar with news TV production before this movie? No, I, I, I mean, apart from watching some morning news shows, but no, that was the one research thing in the movie that at least I got to do, which is go to a news station. I think, Isla, you went to the same one. We went to a news yeah. station in LA and, you know, got taken around by, by real news people and morning and like field reporters, at least in my case. And then we had someone on set in Boston who was sort of someone... She was helpful. You could go to her every once in a while. Yeah. I mean, I have to play like a news boss who has no idea what he's doing. So I didn't have to do any research and it worked out just fine. <laughs> you nailed it. You nailed it. It seemed, was it hard to be that mean? You're a little mean, a little bossy. Uh, I'm supposed to say yes. It was very <laughs> difficult, super tough. I feel like you trapped me there. Um, 
Well, it's good. really fun to play uh, with Isla and Santiago and, and Artemis. We had a lot of scenes together and they're just, they're great to play with. So yeah, it, they, Isla kept egging me on, which was nice. It was, it was. <laughs> You make me laugh so much. It's so funny. Some of his improvs, in fact, a lot of it's in the movie, so you get to see his comedy uh, right there. But he would just say, it was just really funny. He had a buzzer that he would just hit and then do an improv line, and we all were in stitches. <laughs> Artemis, are you behind the camera at all in real life? Believe it or not, no. I know I did a very convincing job. Uh, <laughs> I it was trained somebody came to set um a couple people came to set and taught me how to hold it and look tough and really what you would do you know how close your eyeball would actually get that sort of thing uh even though we, i feel like uh we did just a little bit i just did a little bit of in studio work but for the most part we were out and about in the field and um playing with and avoiding snow and all those good things I love it. Well, I'm excited for you guys to take questions from all the press that we have today. So welcome everybody. Remember to use the raise hand feature and uh, unmute your video, your audio and video, and we'll start taking questions if you guys are ready. I'm going to try to scroll. There's a lot of you guys in here. So we're going to start with, let's see, Shannon McGrew. Oh, that was my first choice also. <laughs> oh, good, good. <laughs> Hi, everyone. My name is Shannon from Nightmarish Conjurings. I'm not going to put my video on because I'm sick, not with COVID. Oh. Um, <laughs> so my oh. question is uh, for Jillian. I would love to know what it was like having to perform wearing that dress the whole time. <laughs> yeah, I didn't really have a costume change besides I, I'm in PJs at one point, but for the most part, I am in a corset and a ball gown the entire time we shot. And I will say that I actually really liked it. Like Jane said, it really helps like get into character, stay in character, helps the posture. Um, but there was one day uh, where we shot, we were on a field and it was very cold. It was 17 degrees and I was oh. just in the dress and I did, I, I, I was shaking uncontrollably, but like, besides that, I feel like we, I don't know, made it work, loved it, loved, you know, I wish I could have kept one because I like to keep one costume for everything I do, but this was a, a pretty massive costume to ask for. Thank you. Were you just happy to get in sweatpants at the end of the day? Every I, this yoga whole, pants? This is the first time they've seen me in not either a ball gown or sweatpants because I was <laughs> constantly in sweatpants when I wasn't in it. I love that. All right, Fred, Fred Topol. I might be messing up your names, but we're happy to have you ask a question if you'll unmute. Thank you. It's Topel. And my Topel. question is also so for that's okay. For Jillian Bell. Was uh, being a Disney character a dream of yours and did Godmother fulfill that dream? Absolutely, to both. I mean, who doesn't grow up wanting to be a Disney princess? I mean, that's the goal. I, all of the women on this are shaking their heads. We're like, yes. Uh, yeah, the script came along and I'd always been looking for something uh, some kind of a magical being to play because my goal in life was to play a witch and this is the closest I've ever gotten to it. She's got magic and spells and and is trying to make um, Isla's character's dreams come true and so yeah I think um, this this was definitely a goal and to to get to do it is I, I'm still blown away that I got the part and and got to act up act amongst all these people. These are, this is, it was such a great cast. Thank you so much. All right, we're gonna go to Laura Suriku. If Hi. you'll unmute, we'll take your question. Yes, perfect. Um, this is for Santiago. Um, you are the king of accents. Um, so I just wanted to know, um, we're so used to seeing you in serious and adult roles, such as Picard, Mer uh, Merlin, and Big Little Lies and, and Three Musketeers. But now you're in a Disney movie and as a prince, how was it to transition and kind of like play this lovable dad character after playing all these serious like knock roles? Well, it was it was an, uh, you know, an, an appeal because like, you always want to change things up. But I also like that it wasn't your typical prince. It was like, you know, Prince Charming in quotes because he's kind of like the underdog and uh, he definitely felt like Isla's character was out of his league, rightly so. Uh, and uh, and it was, I love the, the part that, um, 
that you know he was a guy who was like a serious journalist who wanted to you know report important stories and good news and he's in this like last in the ratings uh you know sensationalist morning show being abused by his boss and uh you know that kind of stuff so there was there was a lot of fun elements to it and of course the cast and everyone to work with everyone it was it was great but you know you always want to change things up so if it's an opportunity to do something different then you know you go for it Thank you for your question. All right, we're going to take a question from Brandon from Movie Scene Canada. How's it going, everybody? Can you guys see me? Hi, okay. we can. Awesome. Well, first of all, congratulations on the movie. Uh, but this question's for anybody from the cast who wants to answer it. So with the world being in the state that it's in right now, I think that now is a perfect time for a film like this to come out. You know, a film that reminds us that happily ever after and fairy tales, you know, you can still find them. They're out there but we might be looking in the wrong places. So do you guys hope that that's what audiences will get from this movie, like a refreshed sense of hope? Yeah, absolutely. And for young girls watching, you know, Happy Ever After doesn't necessarily include a castle, a prince and a dress. It can absolutely, be yeah. blessings you have in your life as you're, with your family or work or. I think it also represents what the world is today. And this, it, it's it's not 1860 anymore. It's It's not, you know, castles and all of this kind of stuff. It's happily ever after is is what you want. It's what you believe. And, and it's a goal that you can achieve on your own. If you want it, if you believe that you can get it, it's, it's, it's something that it, it's not reliant on magic. It's reliant on you and your spirit. And I think that that's really something that we all have to remember is that we are capable of such amazing things and such positive things for ourselves and for others. And that's happily ever after. Oh, get the warm fuzzies from that. Thank you, Jane. <laughs> um, let's take a question from Beth Elderkin, if you'll unmute. Uh, yes, hi, um, I'm Beth Elderkin, I am nine. I apologize for my casual appearance. Six and a half months pregnant, decided to sit on the couch for this one. <laughs> uh, so this is for Jillian or anyone else who would wish to chime in as well. So at the end of the film, we get this animated sequence where we see Eleanor training the next generation of godmothers. And one of them looks to be either a boy or gender non-conforming. And I want to know, do you know if this was intentional? And if so, does it make you happy to see a more inclusive group of godmothers joining the fold? I will start off and just say that I teared up. I actually got to see um, just a one sheet of all the little fairy godmothers. And I immediately wrote back and I said, is that a boy or is is that an, a non-binary person? Whatever, I'm very... I'm, Either way, I'm very excited. This is progressive and, and inclusive and, and um, will make someone feel seen. And I think at the end of the day, if we can be doing that in such a big movie and a Disney movie, that's a beautiful thing. Love that. I'm seeing people smile from that answer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go to Courtney Howard. If you'll unmute, we'll take your question. Uh, hi, my question was actually about uh, building off of Shannon's about wearing the ball gown for Jillian Bell. Did you collaborate at all with the costume designer on the ball gown and how heavy it was? Was this a physical challenge for you? Uh, you know, she took care of me. She definitely took care of me. She made sure that I was warm when we were <laughs> shooting very cold scenes. And she made sure that I could move around a lot because it was very physical, um, most of the scenes. Um, and it was it was like a team effort. You know, our, our director, Sharon McGuire was there and and the head of costumes and we all kind of came together and, and it started with a corset. I actually went to David's bridal and I tried on all different types of wedding dresses and they were all huge ball gowns. And I remember seeing other women there that were trying on <laughs> dresses to be married and they were looking at me and I was in the poofiest thing falling out of a dressing room and they were all like, congratulations, <laughs> but looking at me like that. Was <laughs> but that's how we kind of found the framing for the corset uh, and the ball gown look. So um, yeah, it, it went through uh, many different versions, but we all kind of got there together. And I was so pleased when I saw the final product. 
All right, we're going to go to Jenna Bush. And just a reminder for the press, if you'll leave your video off, just unmute your audio and we'll take your question, Jenna. Hey guys, um, this is for Jillian the Younger. Can you talk a little bit about filming the big performance scene? Sure. Um, filming the performance scene was really fun for me because I'm a singer and guitar player in real life. So getting to do that and also getting to act was such a fun experience to do at the same time. Um, I've said a couple of times today, it's kind of funny because I got on the stage and there were so many wonderful background actors and I looked out and I was like, wow, there's a lot of people here. I'm scared. And I was like nervous and I was like, whoa, this is crazy. But it was so much fun. And I think we filmed that scene for two days, but we all had a blast and it was quite cold because we were in an airplane hangar and I was in a sleeveless dress so I was shivering but Jillian Bell taught me a wonderful trick to breathe out the shivers and I took that with me the whole movie <laughs> so good all right well, we're gonna go to Marta Nunes if you'll unmute your audio hi everyone and um, I'm gonna ask Gil uh, Jillian and Jane uh, if you if you are inspired by other characters of Disney, such as uh, the Godmothers of Sleeping Beauty and uh, the Cinderella Godmother, if they inspire you in any way. Yeah, I mean, the fairy godmother from Cinderella, for sure. She's the uh, OG, she's the original godmother. And um, I definitely, uh, I was definitely trying not to channel her too much. So I had to create something slightly different, but. I mean, that's the one to try to beat. I physically, I, I, I channeled her because there was a lot of, a lot of this, you know, she was a lot of this, a lot of arms and waist acting. But I, I just remembered, I also played another Disney character and I, it was, um, I think, Sleeping Beauty's 50th anniversary or 50th birthday and I played the Wicked Queen. Ooh. Oh, just one night, overnight in, in Disneyland. We shot it up from midnight until six o'clock the next morning. And I had the cape and the things coming out of my fingernails when I'd go to the mirror. Oh, awesome. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard that, waist up acting. Is that yeah, a thing? Yeah. That yeah. is a thing, yeah. okay. Yeah. I love that. It, it's I, because wearing those, cl those clothes, you really, that's all you can use. It's from the waist <laughs> up, yeah. Ukarsh, you don't know about that, right? You're full in. Um, wearing a corset? No, not yet. But I hope <laughs> to experience that someday soon. In your next Disney film. There you go. Yeah. Give me a chance. Yes. Let's take a question from Tati or Tati from Cool Moms, Cool Tips. I know we have some moms in the room and moms to be. We just found out. So we'll take your question if you'll unmute. Hi everyone, um, Tati from Cool Mom School Tips and thank you for such a beautiful and wonderful movie. It's full of so many good things. My question is for Jillian Bell and Jane Curtin. You both play um, Godmothers granting wishes. So I was curious if you had any wishes you wanted to have granted to you. I mean, it depends well, how yeah. heavy we're getting right now because I'd love <laughs> for us to have a vaccine and go back to normal living, or should we answer fun ways? <laughs> I, I, no, I, I think that that's all we can wish for right now. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's the wish we all want. I wanna be able to hug these lovely people and, and see them. Isla was talking about, you know, getting all together and just being able to like have a cast party because we didn't, we wrapped a couple days before we were supposed to wrap. We never got to do that. Sad. I'm so sad. We're having it right now. We're, we'll, we'll have pretend this is a little party. Cheers, guys. Congrats. Hugs. <laughs> All the things. Okay, let's take a question from Mr. Will Wong. If you'll just unmute. Hi. I know I'm not supposed to turn on my camera, but my dog's name is Beanie and the film's set in uh -huh. Town. So this is the most perfect moment I could have brought her on to say hi. So hi, guys. Uh -huh. I want to meet your dog. Uh, well, she, she's just about three months old. So I just brought her home, so I'm so excited. Uh, thank you. And I just want to ask a question. Like, a uh, huge fan of Sharon McGuire. I mean, she she's responsible for Bridget Jones, Bridget Jones' babies. 
some of the most fantastic films of our time. Um, she maintains that element of heartfeltness and, and also that whimsicality also in this film, which I enjoyed so much. Can you talk about the experience working with her? I had never worked with Sharon before and I, I had a lovely time working with her. She's very exact and she does like to do many takes, um, but she gets interesting things out of people. I, I thought it was fun working with Sharon. I enjoyed it. Yeah, it was different and really great. Yeah, it was cool working with a female director. It was, yeah, it was a cool experience. <laughs> I was such a fan of Bridget Jones and I was so excited to get to work with her. And one of the first things she did, which I loved was get Isla and I together alone. And like, I mean, this is going to sound creepy now, but in a hotel room, but. Um, <laughs> what were you wearing? Harvey um, <laughs> Weinstein was not there. No, we got together and we just we just started improvising and playing around. And that kind of set the tone for Isla and I to really just like, be playful with each other and, and go in knowing each other because um, I knew Utkarsh, we've done a movie together, two movies together, but uh, I I didn't know, I, I didn't know anyone else of these fabulous people, but that was really nice. I really appreciated that. I'm just curious, Isla, for you, what's that first day on set like? Because you guys have to be so excited, but what what's the vibe like on set for day one? It's always really nerve wracking, but I can only speak for me. I always feel like, oh no, everyone's going to realize that I'm miscast or that uh, some of my choices that I've, I, I sometimes show up with an idea of how I'm, and, and then it all sort of gets thrown out the window depending on, you know, I, I think it's like anything. It's like being new at school. You just want, you want to, you want to do a really good job and you try your best to do that. And, and you also have a lot of new people to meet and a lot of names to forget. <laughs> <laughs> and any favorite days on set Artemis I'm curious you guys have your little team uh, uh your little team of news news people in the movie so any favorite days on set with your castmates you could talk about yeah I mean we were a straight up crew so that felt cool um you know every little place had its own thing but there was one time where we were out during the what's it called I'm in football and I do a party called the tailgate party tailgate yes <laughs> So much <laughs> was happening there, and you got to see little bits of it. But do y'all remember that costume contest? What was the? Was it they were pretending to be cats on a catwalk? Yes, yes. Yeah, <laughs> there was like eating contests, and I remember, I remember just being so um, uh, enamored with everybody's talents, eating talents, and uh, just trying to trying to trying to hold it in myself. I don't want to speak for them. Uh, that was a pretty great day. And I think it was maybe two days in a row. Yeah. That we were outside doing tailgating, which I haven't actually had a lot of experience with in For Real's life. So it was nice to be part of that all American tradition. Yeah. Have, have any of you actually tailgated? Never. No, I haven't. That was, that was my first as well. You first we, tailgate. We, we escaped the set that day as well, Artemis, didn't we? We went for a nice uh, lunch one of those days. We oh, were, yeah, we were I remember kind of, you guys pretty jealous you guys came oh, back yeah. and had we had a big break and we went into the town in our costumes oh, wow. yeah it was always a good time yeah i had a giant prosthetic on so i couldn't join you we <laughs> 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 scared the customers amazing and you guys filmed this in boston right any standout memories from boston because i've been there once to go to see katie perry perform for radio disney and that's it so I grew up there. Oh, I grew up oh. there. It was like going home. All of the Teamsters were like my cousins. I just, <laughs> I loved riding to work every morning with those guys. I just loved them so much. It's like being home. They loved great. you as well, Jane. They would just talk about you yeah. every time. Yeah. Oh, oh like, love those boys. Yeah. In, in all of you. They had a lot of fun. <laughs> oh. All right, let's go to Courtney Howard. If you'll just unmute your microphone and we'll take your question. Hi, you already got me before, um, but I Did guess I? I could, yeah, 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 I asked Jillian about the costume, but I guess I can ask everybody, um, what, how did this, working on this film, sort of uh, satiate any sort of career dream of theirs? 
That's a good one. I think I think every uh, uh, every girl wants to have something to do with Disney. Every little girl thinks about walking around doing doing this with a with a wand in their hand or being and, a and making huh? <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm saying, or in my case, I, I, I don't know that I joked about being a miserable mom, but I really loved playing it in this role and getting to experience my character kind of fulfilling her inner need, you know, to find happiness. It was amazing. <laughs> Sorry. Thanks. No, 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 no. I like that. I like that. All right. We're going to go to Tanya Lamb. Hi, my question is for Willa and for Jillian Spader. Um, so Gary totally made me laugh. And so I was wondering if you, both of you had a Gary, what would you have him do for you? Um, it, you can go first if you want, Jill. I gotta think, this. there's so many things you could choose here. Go for it, Willa. <laughs> well, I'm not sure, but I would probably have him make me a s'more because that's my favorite dessert. I really <laughs> love s'mores. <laughs> um, he would clean my room for me, definitely. Oh. And do my homework. <laughs> Gary, homework! Smart. I'd probably have him do my laundry. I finally stopped making my mom do my laundry because I was like, okay, I'm 18. If I'm gonna pretend I'm an adult, I should probably do my own laundry, but here I am trying to pass it off onto a magical raccoon. So I see we haven't come too far. <laughs> Ukarsh, I'm gonna ask you that question too, because there's diapers, the situation at your house, right? Oh yeah, we just started feeding our son solids. So it's <laughs> harrowing. It is. I mean, I know this is a Disney movie, but if you guys want to watch a horror movie, just come to my house. Uh, 3 a.m. 3 a.m. every night. <laughs> I've got a screaming banshee of a son who is dropping bombs. Um, and yeah, if a Gary magical creature. Help. Yeah, Gary, if you're listening, help me out. I'm sleep deprived. <laughs> I love that. All right, let's take a question from Melissa from Generation N. Hola, saludos from Miami. How's everyone? Good. Hi. Good. Good. Well, I truly enjoyed this film. I think it's exactly what we need going into this holiday season. So thank you so much for that. Now, being part of this Disney film, there was so much comedy. How much of it was ad lib? Because I, I mean, it was lovely. The, the message was wonderful, but I mean, the comedy was excellent. Thank you, that's very sweet. I mean, I feel like Ukarsh got to improvise probably the most. Yeah, I, I, which was great. We improvised a little bit, um, but we also stuck to the script. The script was so funny already. And so we had a good jumping off point. What do you think, Fish? I agree. I mean, we did a little bit of improv. <laughs> we did a little bit. You did that great line, Sharks, which kills me when I watched the movie. <laughs> Thank so, you. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, we, yeah. Sharon's husband is Indian, so I got special treatment. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Well, I'd, like, I'd like to tell you that you were all talking about a tailgate and you are all welcome down to Miami for a proper tailgate whenever you'd like to have a party down here. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I There's think I am party. It. <laughs> all right, we'll go to Kara O'Doherty. Are you actually in Ireland? I, yes, I, I am. <laughs> I am actually in Ireland. Well, so, uh, so good morning um, from over here. Um, Santiago, your character gets to dress up in historical costume and you've acted in quite a few period and historical dramas. So I was wondering if you had your own fairy godmother, is there a historical character that you have not yet played that you would like to get some magic just sprinkled onto so that you could? Oh, that's a good question. I was just, I just went, when you said that costume, I just went to, it was my first day of work of how cold it was. 
think Isla and I, we both thought our feet were going to come off when we took our shoes off. It was the coldest day. And I was wearing these like stockings that were like, you know, protected me zero in these shoes. But uh, I don't know. I love, I love being surprised. I, just, I feel like you never, you know, when people ask you the question of like, what's, what would you like to do? I always feel like, well, what's your favorite job? It's always the next one, you know? So I, I go, there's so many, there's so many periods of history I'd love I'd love to play. So I don't think one of them necessarily stands out. But I love playing real people, you know, maybe play like a great a genius like Mozart or something like that. That would be amazing. Yeah. Or like Amelia Earhart. You'd be great. Yeah. Well, yeah, that'd be a real transformation, <laughs> wouldn't it? I don't know. Stretch, man. You got to just. <laughs> I think you'd be it easy to find on a beach. See what would happen? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to go over to Marilia Pastor. We'll take your question if you'll unmute. Hello, everyone. Nice to meet you. Uh, my question is for Isla. When we meet Mackenzie, she has given up on the idea of the happily ever after. Um, when you grow up, uh, one must accept that some wishes from your years your youth won't come true. So where do you stand between these two ideas or maybe in between? I think that what's great about life, if you, at least from my perspective, I try to sort of keep it as an open book and not really uh, pin my hopes on anything. I don't know if that's healthy or not. I've just been like that since I was a kid. So I've always been incredibly surprised that I'm employed married have a wonderful family like everything feels like a bonus for me i don't know if that makes me a uh you know i don't know i i i think though that um yeah it's nice to have goals and equally it's nice to uh let 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 life kind of let situations in life guide you into new beginnings or openings that you might not have envisaged for yourself and push yourself out of your comfort zone by being open to doing something potentially that wasn't necessarily in your wheelhouse. To quote Americans, they always say wheelhouse. Is it in her wheelhouse? I don't even know what it means, but it sounds great. We don't either. Yeah. <laughs> no. I think it's a nautical term. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I it was motorcycles. <laughs> now we know. Okay, let's go to Lupe from Cinemovie. If you'll unmute your audio. All right. Hi, how are you guys? Um, great movie. I just love the messaging behind it. And I wanted to know, since we have various generations here, um, do people still believe in fairies like we did maybe growing up in the 70s, 80s, and 90s or earlier? And for the boys, what did you guys uh, grow up believing or wanting to believe? If you ask my daughter right now what she wants to be when she grows up, she'll tell you a fairy. So we 100% uh, <laughs> believe and support in magic in our household so um yeah that's where that's where i'm at we're constantly yeah. in fairy mode we we were we believed in fairies for a while until we didn't i think I that's believe. normal will it do? um yeah i do yeah Good question. Let's go to Laughing Place. Um, Alex is here. If you'll unmute, we'll take your question. We have about 10 minutes left, guys. I'm gonna to try to get through as many more of these as I can. Hello, uh, my question was, you guys, some of you got to work with um, a dog, a pig, and maybe a raccoon, questionable if he was on set. Uh, but I wanted to know about working with those animals. Um, and if you didn't have them there, what you were interacting with. Well, oh, we had them there. It, it was over the top of our dialogue. <laughs> <laughs> screaming pig ruining our lines right will and jillian jillian oh my yeah. god the pig loved to interrupt takes but the pig also loved to leave takes when when he was supposed to be there so yeah she had one temper tantrum in the middle of the scene <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think that she had a different script than us to be fair, yeah. I feel that she had different cues and exits than we had. So yeah, and I think it was Her those says action, screech until they say cut, um, and that's it. So. And what about the, the trotters? I had to have a jump on me. She literally shredded my leg with her vicious little claws. <laughs> I mean, she was terrifying. 
I will say that because she's not in the conference, it feels terrible that we're talking about her. You know, if she could represent for herself, then it's fair, but. Hey, no, she made us all laugh. <laughs> she was no Gary. She was no Gary. <laughs> yeah, Gary was not on set. Gary, a stuffed animal version of Gary was on set. Maybe dog version of Bingo gave pig version of Bingo her lines. <laughs> I think that's right. Yeah. All right, we're going to go to Tenzine and our from Mashable. Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, my question is for Isla. Uh, since you are a mom, uh, do you believe at all in the concept of telling fairy tales to your children? And if yes, what stories have you told your kids? Wait, sorry, say that one more time. I didn't hear that question. Sorry. Yeah, uh, do you tell fairy tales to your children since you are a mom? And if yes, what stories have you told your children? Well, I think um, obviously a lot of the fairy tale stories are, are, you know, a little bit offensive. It's sort of they're pushing a certain type of male, you know, being rescued by a prince or a, a, a woman without a mother, an abandoned woman or a woman as a witch, as a stepmother. So a lot of these uh, stereotypes um, are kind of not really what, what as a parent, they don't necessarily match my ideals. So I've always sort of reformed them and, you know, restructured them. And I've always, you know, exchanged words like beautiful for good or smart, or I think that's what all kind of modern mums do because we don't want to intentionally, you know, we're just trying to, yeah, we're just trying to subvert the stereotypes that are there because they're so old. Good question. Thank you so much. We're going to go to Scott Menzel, if you'll unmute. Sure. Hi. How, how, how is everyone today? Yeah. Uh, so fun movie. Um, and I wanted to ask Jillian this question. Um, after your incredible turn in Brittany Runs a Marathon last year, what was it like being back in a leading lady role? Well, thank you. It was very different. Brittany Runs a Marathon, we shot in like 25 days or something crazy. And um, some of the time, like especially during the marathon scenes, we were breaking down the cameras and doing everything ourselves. So it was very hands-on in a different way. This felt like, you know, it's it's big, it's massive, it's Disney. So um, there's a lot that goes into it. There's a lot of um, cooks in the kitchen, not in a bad way, but just a lot of, a lot of people. And so I think, you know, figuring out who your character is and, and really sticking to that and being open to other ideas and, and collaborating on a different level. It just, it just feels like a totally different thing, but I, I will say that I, <laughs> I enjoy it mostly for the fact that you there's not too much downtime. I think when you're when you're not the lead, there is so much time that people don't even realize that you're just kind of sitting around waiting. And and I will say that like this has been I just feel lucky to even be in this situation. Anytime anyone even knows who I am, I'm like, why? Who paid you? Uh so I both situations I feel really lucky. Thanks. We're going to go to Diana Sue, if you'll unmute and ask your question. Hi, everybody. Um, this movie made me feel loved. And I want to take that and ask each of you, what other Disney movie can you remember? Just choose one because we don't have time um, that have made you feel loved. Ooh, what a good question. <laughs> hmm. Wally is uh, Wally, is that what you said, Wally? I love Wally. <laughs> I love yeah. Wally. Wally is so cool. Okay. I love Lady and the Tramp made me feel warm and fuzzy. Oh, yeah. I love Lady and the especially, Tramp. Especially the live version of Lady and the Tramp. They use only rescue dogs for that movie. I didn't wow. see that. Yeah. My friend Matilda trained the dogs on that. Oh, I'd love what? to see that. I'll see that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they did it I love All right. Beast. I don't know. I'm throwing it out there. <laughs> They're like, we're done with that question, Julian. I'm like, Beauty and the Beast. Oh, feel free. <laughs> we'll talk about Beauty and the Beast all day. 
Sorry. Right. I do I'm love you. Squeeze Daisy. in a few more. Let's see. Laura Sericul. Hi, yes. Um, I just want to quickly, because I know other people want to ask their questions, but the movie really plays on the importance of going viral um, versus the news station and they're trying to get the news out. Um, do you guys feel, how, how is having the responsibility of whatever you guys post will go viral and that is considered news? How, how much pressure and responsibility do you guys feel when you post your, your stuff that does eventually go viral as celebrities and, and actors and, and everything, you know? I don't know, so <laughs> someone else can answer this. I'm not on social media, so I don't count. I mean, we, I think social media just as a platform has to just be rethought in a major way. It's spreading conspiracy and hate and lies and it's threatening our planet and democracy and the publishers should abide by, they are publishers, basic practices and standards and not be spreading nonsense and being a platform for hate groups to join up. So I'm a big believer now that we're on a precipice. We need to get involved and stop the you know stop these big corporations changing the way we all think and not being able to tell what to believe or what not to believe it's amazing how your life is different when you're not on social media it's amazing you're yeah, so I think relaxed it's, Shane it's very much about finding I think the real work is about finding the same truth where we're all yeah we're all, we all kind of agree on what the truth is and then we can go back to arguing and you know just kind of disagree on, on issues but it's about yeah. finding that Right. Finding yeah. the truth, yeah, for sure. Having grown up on social media though, I can say it is a negative space, but also has this beautiful light to it where I've seen a lot of people my age and younger who are getting very involved in big topics they should be involved in and we're meeting friends from all around. So it can be so negative, but it also has this beautiful thing that none of us would have ever gotten to experience without it, so. There you go. Well said, Jillian. Well, guys, we're out of time. So my apologies if we didn't get to your question, but I hope you've enjoyed hanging out with the cast of Godmothered. Again, it's going to be streaming on Disney Plus December 4th. Decorate for the holidays if you do that before you watch it so you don't have regret like me. But the film was so lovely. So congratulations <laughs> to all of you. And thanks, everyone, for joining us today from all over the world. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.